Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss this example, okay. So this is a given integral and we have to solve it over this closed core C. C is a circle here mod z is equal to 2. We have to solve this integral that means we have to find the value of this integration with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem, okay. So let us call that integral as i first. i is equal to integration over c e raised to 2z plus z square upon z minus 1 raised to 5. So we have to find this integral but the most important thing is that closed curve c okay. So let us mention what is a c here. Here c is the circle mod z is equal to 2. So let us draw the circle first. So what is standard equation of the circle? The standard equation of circle is mod z minus z naught is equal to r. What will I do? I will compare the given equation with standard equation and we will find the center and radius of this circle. So here in a standard form, this is the center of circle. This is radius of circle. Okay. So let us compare mod z minus z0 but see in a given equation we have simply mod z that means z0 is 0. So center center is 0 that means we can write 0 0 and radius if you compare right hand side r is equal to 2 so the radius is 2. So the given circle is a circle with center 0 0 and radius 2 let me draw the circle. This is imaginary axis, real axis. Let us have some scaling 1, 2, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, minus 2. So circle will be like this, center 0, 0, radius 2, right? This type of circle we have, okay. Uh, see, after that we will consider the given function. That means we are, we are integrating this function. So let us call it as f of z. Let me re remove this one. We have f of z e raised to 2z plus z square upon z minus 1 raised to 5. So this is the given function, right? So we have to find the value of integral with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem. Let us recall the definition of Cauchy's uh, statement of Cauchy's residue theorem then we will plan what we have to do, right? So the statement of Cauchy's residue theorem is integration over C f of z dz is equal to 2 pi i sum of residues. This is statement of Cauchy's residue theorem. That means we find the value of integration using this formula 2 pi i into sum of residues. That means what we do first, we find the points Okay, we find the points where the function is not analytic. That means generally say the point where the denominator is 0. We check whether those points lie inside or outside. If that singular point lies outside, then no need to find residue. If the point lies inside the circle, then we need to find residue, okay, at all these singular points. We take the sum of all these residues and we take the product weight 2 pi i and by solving it, we get the value of the integration. So here also I will do the same, okay? So let us find a point where the function is not analytic. So will you tell me the point where the denominator is zero, that means function is not analytic? One, if I put z is equal to one, one minus one, zero. Denominator zero, that means function is not analytic. So here, f is, not analytic at z is equal to 1. The function is not analytic at z is equal to 1. Now we need to check that point lies inside a circle or outside a circle. z is equal to 1 that means it is here. So clearly you can see it lies inside a circle right. It lies inside that means we need to find residue at that point okay. And there is only one point which gives the denominator 0 right. So, 
it lies inside C. Okay, it lies inside C. So we have to find a residue. Okay. So now the question is how to find residue. We have a definition of residue which involves Lorentz series expansion. Getting? But see, if it is a pole, we have very simple formula to calculate residue. If you simply observe this function, then you can easily see z is equal to 1 is a pole and its order is 5. So if we have a pole of order n, we have a separate formula to calculate residue. Let me mention here. Here, z is equal to 1 is a pole of order 5. So it is a pole, so I'm going to use the formula residue of f of z at z is equal to 1. So I will write the formula first and then by putting the values, we will calculate it. So 1 upon n minus 1 factorial limit z tends to 1, getting since that singular point is 1, n minus 1 derivative of z minus 1 raised to n f of z. So here n means order of that pole. So order of pole is 5. So at a place of n, I will put 5 everywhere. 5 minus 1, so it's 4 factorial limit z tends to 1. 5 minus 1, that means fourth derivative, right? z minus 1 raised to 5. What is my f of z? This is my f of z. e raised to 2z plus z square divided by z minus 1 raised to 5. You can easily see, we can cancel out this z minus 1 raised to 5. Okay, so there is no more space to write, make a screenshot of it first, then I will go further. So let us simplify it further. See 4 factorial it means 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So 4 into 3, 12 into 2, 24, right? So it's 1 by 24. Limit z tends to 1, fourth derivative. Fourth derivative. And what is remaining inside the bracket? It is e raised to 2z plus z square. So we have to find the fourth derivative. First derivative, second, third and fourth. We cannot find all derivatives directly. In each step, we will find just single derivative, okay? So 1 by 24 limit z tends to 1, okay? Z uh, third derivative I am writing and I am taking its derivative, okay? So let us apply one derivative here. Derivative of exponential function is same e raised to 2z, but again derivative of 2z, which is 2, chain rule, okay? Derivative of z square, 2z. So there was a minus plus sign. So that's why I could take a separate, separate derivatives. Its derivative is this one and derivative of z square is 2z. So 1 by 24 limit z tends to 1, right? Now I'm writing the second derivative outside and I'm taking its one more derivative. 2 is a constant will be as it is. See addition is there, separate, separate derivatives. 2 is constant as it is. Derivative of exponential function same. But again, derivative of 2z, 2, we call it as a chain rule. 2 is a constant, derivative of z is 1. So 2 into 1, you will get 2. Let us simplify it further. z is to 1, second derivative. Again, I am writing the same. Okay, let us simplify this bracket first, then we will get the, take the next derivative. 2 into 2, 4, e raised to 2z plus 2. Okay, so 1 by 24 limit z tends to 1. This time I am writing just single derivative. Since I am going to take its one more derivative. 4 is constant. Addition is there, huh? separate, separate derivative. 4 is constant. Its derivative is e raised to 2z. But again derivative of 2z, 2 plus. Derivative of 2, 0 since it is constant. So 1 by 24 limit z tends to 1 derivative of i am simplifying it first 2 into 4 8 e raised to 2z 0 if you add you will get same okay one more derivative we need to take but see there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it first then i will go further 
okay see now what will i do uh let us take derivative 1 by 24 limit z tends to 1 it is constant you can take it outside and simply we have to take derivative of e raised to 2z which is e raised to 2z into derivative of 2z 2 so 8 into 2 16 by 24 limit z tends to 1 e raised to 2z so both are divisible by 8 8 to the 16, 8 3 the 24. Uh, let us apply the limit. That means at a place of z, I will put 1. So it is e raised to 2. So this is the required residue. So we had only one singular point. Z is equal to 1, and which was lying inside the circle. So we calculated residue. So now it's time to use Cauchy's residue theorem. By Cauchy's residue theorem uh, so i should write the integration okay so by the statement of cauchy's residue theorem its value is 2 pi i sum of residue okay but in this example we have just single singular point and we have a single residue of it so let us put its value 2 pi i its residue is 2 by 3 e square let us take the product 4 pi i by 3 e square so this is required value of the integration okay so in this way we solved example make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you in next video